and welcome back to another video lecture from our lecture series on industrial microbiology and today the product that we are going to discuss is the production of glutamic acid so let us first know about glutamic acid a bit it is widely used as a flavor enhancing compound in the food industry and it is used in its salt form which is the monosodium glutamate MSG glutamic acid was first isolated from a glutamic acid producing bacterium named cornibacterium glutamicum by S. Udaka and S. Kinoshita these two scientists discovered this bacteria which can produce glutamic acid uh, glutamic acid was the first amino acid to be produced on a large scale okay and glutamic acid we know that it is produced in the Krebs cycle and the precursor of glutamic acid is alpha keto is alpha keto glutarate okay alpha ketoglutarate we know is an intermediate in the TCA cycle which is formed via citrate isocitrate and alpha ketoglutaric acid okay alpha ketoglutaric acid this alpha ketoglutarate is then converted into L-glutamic acid through reductive reductive amination okay reductive amination with free ammonium ions with free ammonium ions got it next uh, before we move on to requirements for production uh, let me tell you some more facts about glutamic acid okay glutamic acid is an intra cellular compound meaning it is pres it is produced inside the cell the microorganism that is being used for the fermentation it produces glutamic acid inside like it does not release it in, in the fermentation broth and so we need to isolate our product from the microorganism that means we need the product to be excreted out in the fermentation broth which means we have to increase the permeability or the flow of material inside out from the microorganism okay so there are certain ways by which we can increase the permeability of the glutamic acid producing bacteria which we will study in the next slides so now we come back to requirements for production so far we have discussed many products and their industrial production by now i hope you all can remember the basic requirements for fermentation that is carbon source is required nitrogen source is required in some products the growth factors are also required for the production some products need oxygen some do not like either they are produced by aerobic process or anaerobic process and definitely pH of the medium is an important factor while we are going for fermentation production okay so first we'll discuss the carbon source okay for production of glutamic acid glucose and sucrose are frequently used they are the widely used 
carbon sources for glutamic acid fermentation however there are other carbohydrate sources as well which include starch hydrolysis fructose maltose ribose and xylose these carbohydrates are also used for the fermentation of glutamic acid sucrose sugarcane molasses and sugar beet molasses are also used we know molasses are very widely used as carbon sources for production right so when we are talking about the carbon sources in glutamic acid production there is certain amount which is required for an efficient yield okay so during fermentation when we are using molasses whether it is sugar cane molasses or sugar beet molasses uh the molasses should have they they contain not should have i'm sorry they contain high high biotin component uh and we all know biotin is biotin is a vitamin right so both the molasses contain high amount of biotin and in the next slides we'll read why biotin is required why do we need bio like why does the molasses contain biotin and why it is essential like why it can be useful for the glutamic acid production okay next is the nitrogen source this is like very common ammonium sulfate ammonium chloride ammonium phosphate aqueous ammonium ammonia gas and urea are used as nitrogen sources okay they are used as nitrogen sources although a large amount of ammonium ions is necessary for the production of glutamic acid a high yield meaning a high yield meaning if the ammonium is higher in amount it can inhibit the growth of the microorganism which is producing glutamic acid and hence it will affect the yield of the glutamic acid so to maintain the balance a suitable amount of ammonium needs to be added okay see here it is written high concentration of ammonia of ammonia it inhibits the growth of microorganisms as well as it affects the yield okay it affects the yield uh we saw there is one factor that is ph because ph of the medium has to be maintained so ammonium are used to maintain the ph okay when the medium is going too acidic add ammonium the medium will be balanced okay next is the growth factors growth factors the most important growth factor is the biotin it is a vitamin right as we all know is about biotin is a vitamin when we are using glucose in our medium and when the media consists of 10% of glucose requirement of biotin is 5 mg per liter okay that means 10% meaning 10 we are going volume by volume ratio okay we are going volume by volume ratio so 10 ml glucose in 100 ml media okay so when we are using this ratio of glucose in our media the requirement is 5 mg per liter that means in 1000 ml how much glucose is required 10 ml glucose in 
right so in 1000 ml how much 1000 ml upon 100 into 10 100 ml glucose is required 100 ml sorry 100 ml biotin is required oh I'm, I'm very sorry 100 ml glucose will be required in 1 liter of the media which will have 5 mg of biotin okay I'm sorry for the confusion some strains some strains of microorganism that will be used as the producing microorganism of glutamic acid they require l cysteine as an additional growth factor okay next we move on to oxygen supply oxygen supply so what is it indicating that the process is an aerobic one right production takes place in presence of oxygen and the optimal amount of oxygen that needs to be present in our fermenter or in the fermenter tank is 3.5 into 10 to the power minus 6 mole to atm per minute per ml okay this is the optimum amount of oxygen that needs to be supplied to the fermentation tank for the fermentation process okay now the amount of oxygen can affect the production like less oxygen will have some effect more oxygen will have some effects on the fermentation when oxygen is less when the medium is oxygen deficient there will be excretion of lactic acid and succinic acid okay when oxygen is less in the fermentation lactate and succinate or lactic acid succinic acid will be excreted like the microorganisms will be excreting these two products okay and when oxygen is in excess like the amount the oxygen is more than this required amount ammonium ion deficiency will cause growth inhibition and production of alpha ketoglutarate okay when oxygen is higher in concentration than required and it will happen when ammonium ions are in deficiency okay so there will be growth inhibition of the microorganism which will lead to the production of alpha ketoglutarate in both the cases whether the medium is oxygen deficient or the medium has excess oxygen the yield will be low because it is not meeting our optimum criteria it is not meeting our optimum conditions hence the yield will be low okay next is the pH just one thing the optimum pH has to be maintained between 7 to 8 that is alkaline when it is going towards acidic you may add some ammonium salt to maintain as we read in the nitrogen source that ammonium is added to maintain the pH right and when uh, the medium is too much alkaline you may take out some ammonia from the medium and you may balance the pH okay now we move on to the fermentation process and the first thing that we will discuss about fermentation process is the inoculum preparation and media preparation the media for glutamic acid production should contain this contains okay the media should contain glucose 
के टू एच पी ओ फोर के एच टू पी ओ फोर एम एन एस ओ फोर एफ ई एस ओ फोर एम एन एस ओ फोर हाइड्रेट यूरिया एंड बायोटीन ओके दिज आर द कंटेंट्स फॉर मीडिया रिक्वायर्ड फॉर प्रोडक्शन ऑफ ग्लूटामिक एसिड द माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म दैट इज यूज फॉर द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ ग्लूटामिक एसिड इज कॉर्नी बैक्टीरियम ग्लूटामिकम ओके एंड स्ट्रेन्स आर बींग डेवलप्ड लाइक द ग्लूटामिकम स्ट्रेन्स आर बींग डेवलप्ड लाइक विच कैन गिव मोर ईल्ड विच कैन रिजिस्ट हाई एल्कलाइनिटी और हाई एसिडिटी अकॉर्डिंग टू डैट researches are being going on and strains are being produced so after the medium is prepared a suitable strain of the corny bacterium glutamicum from a stock culture is selected and is inoculated in the given media the culture has to be incubated up to 16 hours okay the culture has to be incubated for 16 hours at 35 degree celsius after sufficient growth has occurred approximately near about 6% of the inoculum is added to the production fermenter okay so i hope you have understood inoculum and media preparation there is another part for the medium like i had discussed earlier that glutamic acid is an intracellular compound right it is produced by the microorganism inside it and hence its production is dependent on cell permeability of acid producing bacteria right like the microorganisms cell wall should be permeable enough that the glutamic acid is released into the fermentation broth okay um so the permeability of the microorganism can be increased by either biotin deficiency why biotin deficiency because when the microorganism is unable to get biotin for its survival the cells will lyse and hence the product will be excreted out in the fermentation broth okay next permeability can be increased by addition of penicillin and how does the addition of penicillin works it will prevent the cell wall formation of glutamic acid bacteria hence the cells will lyse and the glutamic acid will be excreted out in the fermentation broth okay next the medium can be treated with fatty acid derivatives and the other way can be use of oleic acid oxotrophs i hope you all know the meaning of oxotrophs oxotrophs are the microorganism which are deficient in certain compound like for example here we are talking about the microorganism which are deficient in oleic acid okay these microorganisms are deficient in oleic acid okay so now we move on to the fermentation process okay so fermentation is carried out for approximately 40 to 48 hours at 30 degree celsius after the medium has cooled down to 30 degree celsius the inoculum is 
added like from the medium we take out around 6% of the inoculum and we add it to the fermenter the fermentation is then carried out for 40 to 48 hours at 30 degrees celsius during which the ph should be 7 to 8 temperature should be around 30 degree celsius and aeration should be controlled okay aeration what did we see what is the optimum oxygen required for fermentation 3.5 into 10 to the power minus 6 mole to atm per volume per minute or per ml just please check it back okay so urea is added intermittently to maintain the ph right and during fermentation approximately 50 percent of carbohydrate is converted to l-glutamic acid okay so this is i have summarize the entire fermentation process in a chart form which will make it easier for you to understand first the carbon source is taken which is then processed after processing the carbon source we mix it up with the, our nitrogen source growth factors and all other requirements and then it is added to the fermentation broth in the fermentation broth fermentative microorganisms are then added okay from here after the incubation happens nearly 6% of this inoculum will be added to the fermented tank where fermentation will take place okay so after the inoculum is added in the fermentation tank the fermentation process will occur in between 36 to 40, 40 to 48 hours then what did we study that approximately 50 percent of the carbohydrate will be converted into glutamic acid and uh, at industrial production glutamic acid is produced in its salt form that is monosodium glutamate okay so after the micro like we will increase the permeability we have seen all the factors that increases the cell permeability after all this the glutamic acid will be excreted out in the fermentation broth and it will be accumulated now we have come to the harvest and recovery step so first I'll explain you the harvest and recovery and then I'll again come back to the diagram okay so recovery can be done by using a rotary vacuum filter which can again be improved by using filter aids Another method is by chromatographic methods or by concentration crystallization method. In the crystallization method, it is based on the pH of isoelectric point. Okay, because the product will be recovered as a salt, as an ion, and therefore we are focusing on isoelectric point. Precipitation of amino acids with salts like ammonium and calcium salts are also commonly used. Glutamic acid is an amino acid we all know. So it can be precipitated with salts like with ammonium salts or with calcium salts. Okay, Precipitation becomes easier. So at industrial level usually glutamic acid is recovered in the form of crystals here crystallization of monosodium glutamate takes place by using ammonium salts 
or by using uh, ion exchange chromatography the monosodium glutamate acid crystal is then dried and finally we have our MSG recovered so here we come to the end of our lecture I hope I have been able to make you understand the production of glutamic acid if you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and do subscribe to our channel thank you